So I swung by Kiwis to return his bird that he left at my shop the other night when we did that live. Kiv. Yeah. It's that, Kiv. It's been psychically following me around the shop. It knows all my bank account <laughs> information. Oh, but no, seriously, man, I'm, I'm a little freaked out by that. So I stopped to drop that off and I saw this. And I said, what, a, what an amazing throwback. This car is as 1970s small car as you could possibly get. So why do I say that? When you think about like the, the vintage Mopar days, people think everybody in the 70s had a, a Roadrunner or a Cooter or a Challenger or Superbirds and all sorts of stuff, but it wasn't really like that. Those cars were around when they were new, 71, 72, 73, 74 or so, they really went out of style. And by like 1975, you had that whole like opera window thing going on and the, the faux grills and all. So things like kind of like got away from that muscle car kind of styling. And all of those cars, those Cudas and Challengers and Roadrunners, they ended up in, in like three places. People junked them because they were just like so completely out of style, they didn't want to be seen with them. Where they sold them and ended up in the hood where orange and bright green cars were just the thing to have, right? Or they ended up like in trailer parks and like, like off in the, the distance. But for the most part, in the 1970s, middle 1970s, you had stuff like this. This is exactly the kind of car that I think of when I remember the 70s. So it's a basic 1968 satellite, which back in the day you could buy one of these things running and driving for like 75 bucks, 100 bucks. Nobody wanted them. They were everywhere. Junkyards were full of them, driveways, and it was in satellites and chargers. The 68 to 70 chargers, people think of them as gold today, but they weren't back then. Nobody wanted the damn things. You couldn't give them away. So cars like this satellite were everywhere. You pick them up for next to nothing. And it's of about the condition you'd find a mid 1970s car. We'll walk around it in a minute. But here's the thing that's really 70s about this. Somebody popped a 446 pack in it. So now this isn't just any old 446 pack swap. So let, let's go back a minute, right? The cars, the muscle cars that we think of today, a lot of them ended up wrapped around telephone poles and, and upside down in ditches and everything else. And for a while, stuff like 446 pack motors were everywhere and dirt cheap. You could buy a complete running motor out of a wreck Challenger or, or, or Barracuda for like 300 bucks, 400 bucks. So if you were a Mopar guy in the 70s, let's say it's like 1977, you went and bought this car for 100 bucks. You bought that motor for 350 dollars. You spent a weekend bolting them all together and you had a low 13 second, high 12 second street brawler. And you'd run these things around until a rod would poke out the side of it, which we included transmission out of the thing. And then you'd just like, kind of like walk away from it and build another one because they were dirt cheap and they were everywhere. You didn't have that in New Zealand. Though, no, right? no, we did not have that in New Zealand. Anything American was worth good money, worth good dollars. Like four door sedans. Be amazed how many 57 Chevy four door sedans there are in New Zealand. Well, there were a lot of these things four doors that people would yeah. do this to. Well, they were just a family hauler, weren't they? Right, right. Um, well, Park just guys a four door would... sedan, you throw the kids in the back and it's go. But, but more Park guys in the 70s were not style conscious. You know, we just we just look for any roller that we could throw our big block into, right? You know, and go. So, the fine points of this thing, I was just looking this looking around. So the car, from what I could tell, was originally a six-cylinder car. It had air conditioning. It still has the, uh, the AC stuff all up underneath the dashboard. The motor is not an original six-pack motor. It's uh, it's a 440, but looking at the damper, it just it just has the regular damper. It doesn't have the six-pack damper with the little inertia ring on it. So this is just a standard 440. And at one point, this engine had AC on it. The intake is, is, is the factory 1970-71 casting. Remember, 69 and a half was the only aluminum one. That was the Edelbrock intake manifold. And the one you'd get over the counter if you went to like a, a Dodge dealer and you ordered a six-pack setup over the counter, you'd get the aluminum intake manifold. But the production cars, the 1970 and 71 production cars, came with this cast iron manifold. And the carburetors looked to be just a, a regular set of the, the production 446 pack ones. It's uh, 
it's it's cobbled together with just the right amount of crude to uh you know it, it, it speaks of the era right this is exactly what this stuff it's looks like it's a throwback this is a true throwback if you guys want to know what a late 1970s typical mopar not a show car not a race car not you no know, nothing exotic but just like the typical b-body mopar that was brawling around the streets back in the 70s this is exactly exactly it that's cool so what are you doing with this uh well it's got zero brakes yeah which is a little terrifying it was pretty cool because you almost t-boned the turnpike cruiser uh, yeah. like that would have been this is viral it was, was funny. There was, was a little, little uh, like 3.5 seconds of sheer terror. Yeah. He, he was pulling the car over. I'm standing over there, and this is like downhill, right? So as he's pulling a car over, I see him like pumping on the brake, and he's rosing in the parking. Tick, 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 tick. You know, the, the parking, park, parking pole wouldn't have gay. He's gonna, he's gonna team on the turnpike cruiser, and we're gonna get a viral video out of this. <sighs> Park. It wasn't going into park. <laughs> but it's got uh it's got the original 10-inch drum brakes, it's got eight and three quarter rear in it. Yeah, let's look at the interior and all. Oh no, the Kiwi fell. He took a hitter. The cheapo JC Whitney mirrors. Headlining needs a bit of love. Sure. We've got boxes of parts, so we'll just work through it. And, yeah, primarily get the brakes going and then um, road test it, see what's what's doing and not doing well, and, and go from here. It seems to run reasonably well, from given the, the horror stories you hear about getting six packs to run. Oh. Total throwback, 1968. 1968 only. The black door buttons, and what you have these things before you shut the door, you gotta go like that, pop the button out, and then the door will shut. <laughs> Back in the day, all of these cars had this section ripped out. Right, yeah, I've seen that a number of times on the Mopar. That pin tears out. Doesn't it? Well, that's because this button would stick, and if you don't hit it ahead of time, every time you go to close it, you end up having to slam it, and slam. it would eventually rip out. Yeah, you go. Look at that. Oh, well. It's got the cool wheels on it, just the wide steelings. Yeah, half wheels. Which was another big thing. In, in the 70s, the, the cop wheels were really heavy, but they were 15 by 7s. Right. So it was the widest steel wheel we can get back then, you know, in the junkyard. So you'd pay like 20 bucks for a set of four. Jeez. Throw them on your car and you're good to go. That was cheap hot riding. Yeah. It was cheap hot riding. A car like this, like this exact car, you would duplicate in like the 70s for like 800 bucks. That would be a total investment on it. And if you were lucky, you'd make that back in like two weeks. Right. <laughs> you know Have I mean? some fun and sell it off. Fountain Avenue, 20 bucks a run, you know? <laughs> but yeah, that's it, guys. I figured, let me just show you this car real quick. Oh, you want to start it up? Got it going like this.
are you gonna you gonna go through this car and update yeah. it all on your channel? Yeah, yeah. Come over to have it, take a look. Kiwi Classics and Customs. We'll be going through it step by step, and you know, sharing with the viewers what what's gone wrong, why it's not working. It's got a leaky rear carb. Yes, yeah, the, the, the rear carburetor has got a little bit of um, fuel coming out. Not a lot, but it, it, more than it should. Right. Uh, it you know, shouldn't have any, really. Um, so we got that to do, the brakes, and yeah, as I say, road test and see what else is working. You know, turn oh. signals and things like that are you know, nice. Yeah. All right, so if you're into this thing, he'll be covering it all on his channel. And you get it all back together again, we'll, we'll go take the test drive. with it, right? <laughs> Hey, well, you're welcome. welcome. Make us call YouTube famous. Find YouTube famous. There you, go. there you go. All right. In the meantime, keep this freaking thing away from me, man. I'm telling you, there's something with it. There's so, it's it wants my soul. <laughs> all right, Tony. I'll keep it away from you. You can sleep well at night. All right. Okay. See you tomorrow. Yeah.